So I started learning Japanese in year seven, like many students in this country. Um, then in, when I was in year 10, I had the opportunity to go on a student exchange to uh, Osaka. So I spent six months there. I lived with a host family, went to regular Japanese classes, uh, had my own Japanese uh, lessons as well. Um, and so by the end of that six months, I was, uh, I was quite good conversationally and could talk about you know, pretty much anything that wasn't too technical. Um, so then after returning to Australia, I um, finished, I, I continued doing Japanese, of course, uh, through year 12, and then I uh, went to study arts commerce at Monash University. And so for the arts degree, I, did, I majored in, in Japanese. And so that also gave me the opportunity to go again to Japan in my third year. I went to Saitama University uh, for this time for 12 months. Um, fairly different to my high school experience, but, again, but most of my classes were, well, all of my classes were taught in Japanese, and most of the classes that I chose were about Japanese or Japanese linguistics. Um, many of them were aimed at students who were, uh, you know, like me, not, ja not local Japanese students, international students, but I also took some that were, even some of the Japanese linguistics classes I took were aimed at local Japanese students. Um, so it was a, um, that was, that 12 months is really where I sort of filled in all the gaps that I had left over. And um, so by the end of that, I was able to, I took the level one of the Japanese uh, language proficiency test. It was IQ at the time, it's sort of N1 now. Um, and I, um, and uh, particularly I got 93% on the grammar and reading comprehension part. Uh, I didn't do quite as well on the, the kanji and, and uh, <laughs> vocabulary. <laughs> It's a huge part of that exam, obviously, in terms of how many things you actually have to know. But um, what I sort of, uh, I guess the, the fact that I was able to get 93% on that grammar and reading comprehension part, I think, reflects how well I understood the language so that I could work around the, with the words I didn't know and, and the kanji I couldn't read um, to still uh, do well and pass overall. Um, so then, um, after, yeah, so after I, after I finished that program, I returned to Australia. Uh, finished university here and then uh, went and decided I, you know, I've spent all this time learning Japanese, I better go and use it. So I went and work and found a job in Japan and I ended up working in Tokyo for a total of four years, uh, for working for two different companies. And both of those were, they were both Japanese companies. Most of the people that worked there were Japanese and so all day, every day was just using Japanese. And uh, if there were any, any, the main thing that I got out of that in terms of Japanese language ability was really just the, um, improving my keigo and um, just using uh, Japanese in a business context. Um, so then, um, after those four years, I, you know, I, was, I felt like I'd used my Japanese enough. I was pretty satisfied in that respect, but I still felt like I, after after leaving, I sort of I, I knew so much. I felt like I knew so much about Japanese. I had learnt so much over those. It was about uh, ten years overall, I think. Um, I, I knew so much and I, you know, I could see other people who were learning Japanese struggling with some of the things that I struggled with, you know, uh, <clears throat> back when I was in, in high school or whatever. And I felt like it would be a waste to not pass that on somehow, all of the things, all of the experiences that I had. Um, particularly because I know that a lot of people don't have those experiences that I um, was fortunate enough to have. I didn't, um, you know, g going to uh, on exchange program in high school and again in university and then going to work there. Most students don't have that opportunity. So, um, and a lot of the things that I learned in that time uh, were things that weren't, they're not covered in textbooks. Um, teachers might, you know, as teachers, you, you might teach these to things to students, but if, uh, if it's not written down somewhere, it's easy to miss parts. And um, so I really wanted to put, a, put it all together into, uh, into a book. And so I, I wrote, and that's, where, that's when I decided to sit down and write 8020 Japanese. Um, so, and I, and I basically, my intention with this book was to make it the book that I wish I had had when I started learning. 